Uh, hi, my name is Peter Warman. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Nuzu, and I think we're known for um, market intelligence on gaming and esports. That's been our our focus now for over 10 years. So, what are the typical questions that we get from um, from newcomers to this business? Well, there's a lot of many, there's many different types of companies and people that, that reach out for uh, with questions. But I think a common one is, what is this esports thing? It's that vague that it sometimes starts. Uh, I hear it's really big, but I want to understand more because I'm an investor and is there money to be uh, made in this space? It's very generic. Um, and the, the other typical one, of course, is how does it compare to sports? That's a big, uh, a big question. And, and another one is, uh, is my game suitable for esports? So I have a gaming community, it's a successful game, there, there's, it's competitive. Should I just facilitate the grassroots or should I take initiative to create this esports professional structure on top of it? So that's more coming from um, game developers themselves. Um, and yeah, it's just interesting to be at the middle of this business like Nuzu is and to get all these questions, to learn from the questions and to be able to answer them as good as possible. Gaming and its companies are extremely advanced in using analytics to optimize the experience that consumers have. Um, thing like A-B testing comes natural to games companies. A personalization of what is offered to you in a store as micropayments, all that optimization stuff is something that games companies are, are, are the best at. They have often a pool of tens to maybe hundreds of millions of players every month that they can test that stuff on. And to take in so much information and to connect that with personas uh, in your game that you treat differently in their experience is um, because of the interactive nature of games something that other media do not have but they can learn from that as other media also become more interactive and add interactive layers to the viewing experience or to the listening experience just managing the direct consumer relationship and optimizing and personalizing your service using the analytics approach of that games companies have uh, could bring them to a new, a new level of, uh, of business or success, I think. There, and there is also a different way of looking at it. That's um, game mechanics that are the results of all that A-B testing and analytics. Game mechanics that have been thought up, uh, currency, credit systems, marketing tactics, all those individual elements can be isolated and then um, applied to other businesses. Uh, that's a personal belief that I have. A lot of innovations on the micro level, on little mechanisms, um, have been A-B tested on hundreds of millions of games, and they still are unexploited in other services. So that is something that I would look at, or some of our clients look at, who are in other media industries. Um, and that's, that's a fun brainstorming experience, and it always leads to new thoughts about business models, new marketing strategies, and even new products. The history of New Zoo is, is one of the success factors has been the fact that we're in Europe because we always saw uh, the East and the West as equally important or let's say, let's say North America and, and, and China, Southeast Asia and Japan, Korea as equally important um, in the world. At that moment, 10 years ago, the business models and, and how games were made and published and talked about were different. That has, that has all come together way more so it's, that's been part of the acceleration of our growth. Why now with 70, 75 people, I believe, uh, today, we have a number of people in China is for two reasons. One is to um, assist the Chinese local companies to understand more of the open seas market. So we sell market intelligence in our services to Chinese companies. They also, because of the new regulations, are more and more looking for overseas business and acquisitions. And the other reason is what you are talking about, and that is, um, um, to have intelligence and data on the Chinese market for companies that want to move in or want to partner there. And that is pretty hard to get, to get data there. You, will, you can do your local research and surveying and stuff, but that's, uh, that just gives you limited 
um, a picture. If you want really hard data, you need to partner with local companies, such as for mobile, we partner with Talking Data, who has uh, their SDK in apps of 80,000 developers, giving them an 85% coverage of all smartphones in China. So we can then aggregate data from that uh, to see uh, what's happening in the mobile ecosystem. And um, we now have two or three, I believe, partnerships that are very similar on the streaming space that are being uh, finalized, which I, we haven't announced yet. Uh, because the streaming space in China is very, you know, the numbers that come out of there are just uh, enormous. And we, yes, we believe the streaming platforms are bigger than the Twitch in numbers, but not a hundred times. So we're trying to get a grip on that, but the only way is to have local partners of which data is not the primary business model. And we've sourced three now, and we're finalizing those into partnership agreements, giving us new feeds uh, of data. Uh, but it's a lengthy process um, and Meanwhile, we'll just, we just do a lot of validation of our estimates based on a smaller base of data with the Chinese companies before we publish it. Um, there's more to come, but it's not, it's not, not easy indeed. If your money comes from advertising and sponsorships or selling media rights, you will need to have something in place that is respected by the traditional industries, often these are the Procter & Gamble's and Unilevers of the world, they need to be able to report back to the boss in a way that is comparable to other media to prove success. So to have standardization in that respect is good. It's the reason why Nielsen is in there, to provide their stamp of approval and a quantitative measure of success. So yes, I do think it is important. On the other hand, um, I would also, in parallel, look at a new way of valuing that, that we think of. And I mean, we is the interactive media people and not only follow the traditional media way of valuing things. Um, and that's a parallel track that will take longer to implement and hopefully that also will then be applied to traditional media as that all moves to completely digital and non-exclusive agreement and um, better measurable in a, in, a, in a direct way. But I definitely applaud the standardization of the time metrics and the valuing of games as uh, doing so well in engagement, in viewing, and not only in gaming itself. Yeah, you need to aggregate across streams, but that's all digital in one pool, so that's not really difficult. Actually, I believe that's not, that's not the limitation. The, the problem is if, if that content goes on TV and in 18 countries localized and on 16 different digital platforms and Facebook and social networks, streamers are allowed to restream it and talk over it. Then it becomes pretty difficult to put an overall number, uh, a number on it. Uh, but at least we should get to a space where we have a certain value for, for the minutes, the engagement that we are creating that we accept as being accurate and uh, the brands accept as they've accepted stuff that's not accurate in the past. They do something that everybody believes. <laughs>